Hey beautiful people, Ryan Hamer here. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. In this video today, we are going to be talking about when you're gonna go purchase a car, who you should go to, what to look out for, some of the things that you need to consider. So I actually had a friend of mine reach out to me as she wanted to go purchase a car as her car had died on her and her credit was challenged. So, Long story short, she ended up engaging with one of these uh, fintech companies. So a fintech company is a, it's actually an online loan company because she couldn't qualify at a dealer. She couldn't qualify with the dealer's regular, uh, regular lending arm. So she ended up with this company that said that they will, they will assist her. Needless to say, she had credit issues and they were offering her a rate of between 15 and over 30% based on her credit. And I need you guys to be aware of several things. You need to find out whether they are going to one lender or whether they are going to multiple lenders because in some instances, when you go to look at a car to purchase, what will happen is they might end up hitting your credit report multiple times within the same period of time. And I know it doesn't have a, as much of a significant effect as if you go to like 20 different lenders and have your credit report smashed up like that, like cottage cheese. But the fact of the matter is, there are situations in which your credit bureau report can be hit like six times when you're trying to look for a, a car. So just keep that in mind. It does sting a bit, all right? Also, interest, interest, interest. What is the interest that they're going to offer you? I'll tell you when it matters and when it doesn't matter. So luckily my friend was really, really smart and she knew exactly what kind of game that they were playing. She needed a car, so she kind of had to bite the bullet and go ahead and take on whatever interest rate they were going to give her. She ended up with an interest rate of, I think it was something like between 13 and 15%, which is incredibly high. Yes, it is high. However, it still isn't 30%, could be much higher. So if you're gonna be paying like $800 a month for a car, that's crazy. Like, and I think her car was only, I think her car was in the like $25,000 range. So here's my thing. They were able to give her multiple offers and they said, oh, well, if you get the, so be aware of add-on. So they said, oh, well, if you get the, the rust package, you know, we'll give you this particular rate. Or if you get the, if you get the, 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 what is it, the warranty and the extra protection, uh, then it'll be this rate. And if you get gap insurance, it will be blank rate. And I said to her, be aware of what they're trying to do to you here. Uh, this, these, these little add-ons amount to thousands upon thousands of dollars that's added on to your final bill in addition to the great interest that you're going to be paying each month. So you have to differentiate and figure out which one is worth it. So I said to her, I said to her, just wait. And then sure enough, what happened was they kept coming back to her with an adjustment of interest or throw, uh, an adjustment with regards to the price if she chose this option or if she chose that option. So the thing about it is I said, the only one that really makes a difference. So think about it like this. I said, contact the dealer, contact another dealer, say, hey, if I had this car, how much would a rust treatment cost me? And so she went and she did, she checked and the rust treatment was like maybe couple hundred dollars yet the dealer was throwing that on for a thousand plus so she was getting hosed and then when it came to the warranty the warranty you know sometimes it's it, depending on the condition of the vehicle it may come in handy or it may not so you could be paying X amount of dollars for a warranty and you might not ever use it so you could be paying more per month when you really don't need to uh, a really good safety if you make sure that the car is safetyed and certified and you take your own mechanic to look at the car and get an idea and really do a thorough inspection of the car, you'll get a good idea as to how long it'll last you. Nobody wants to spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars for a lemon, right? So always make sure that you go with your own mechanic to take a look at it. Now, the last one 
is very interesting. So the gap insurance. The gap insurance, that's a tricky one and that is a beneficial one. I know it costs a little bit of money, but what happens if you do get into an accident after say three weeks, two months, six months, a year, and you've got seven years on this vehicle to pay? The problem with that is, of course you will not have paid off the vehicle or significantly paid down on the vehicle and you'll have so much more to go and there's no vehicle left. So if you don't have the appropriate insurance to cover you with regards to payments, should anything happen to you in the beginning section, in the beginning part of your, your uh, loan process, then you're gonna, get, you're gonna really get screwed. You're gonna get really, really hosed. So the reason why it's important is because these car loans, what they do is they weight the interest heavily at the beginning. So we call them front heavy. So the interest is weighted heavily at the beginning of the term. So as you're paying down your car, paying down your car, paying down your car, it's going to be maybe a year or two or three before you actually start scratching principal. There's less of your money going to the principal. So you're not able to bring down your, your car loan quickly at the very beginning. And that's why you it's advantageous for you to hedge your bets and you get gap insurance just in case something happens within the first couple of years or so. You don't have no control over accidents. You have no control over, especially now where car theft is crazy and maybe your car gets stolen and you're still stuck on the hook for that ridiculous loan. So gap insurance is a good idea just in case. And now you need to ask about that, right? So how much will that affect your monthly payment? And so the reason why I said my friend is really, really smart is, so there's another clause. There was a clause in the agreement that said, you have to have, uh, they said, you, it's an open loan. It's an open loan. You can pay it down as much as you want after the first year. So here's the trick. You are still on the hook for all of the front loaded interest within the first year. So always check to find out when are you able to make additional payments on the car loan. If you are blocked from making additional car payments within the first six months or the first 12 months, that's something to consider. That's something to think about because if you're just going to make straight payments for the first six to 12 months, you're only making the required payments. Okay, fine. But say you want to do, say you want to make accelerated payments. And we, I think we've talked about this, or I'll make mention of it again, the cash flow index. So what you do is you take your, your loan amount, the full amount, so that'll be like $25,000, $25, and you divide that. Here, I'll do that with you right now. If we had a loan, and the loan was $25,000, and we divide that by the cash flow index, let's say her, her payment is a, 600 a month, which I don't think it is, but let's just say for argument's sake, let's say it's $600 a month, that's 41. So 41.6. Cash flow index dictates that if it's under 50, it's an efficient loan. If it's more than 50, because you're dividing the total loan amount by your monthly payment, and then you get a number. If it's under, if it's under 50, it's efficient if it's over 50 and above then it's then it's not efficient you want to bring that you want to pay that down as quickly as possible so when i did the math on this one like and i just threw out a number these aren't the exact numbers of the situation just to give you an idea it was 41 percent or something like that so it's it's it's, it's uh it's efficient ish if you will so you want to what well, the key is she knows that she's upwards like she because she's at 50 percent now let's just say that I mean, she's at 15%. What if she was paying a, thir a loan worth 30% interest, right? So that 30%, you know, that would, that would be a ridiculous amount of money that she's paying each month. So that would clearly put her over 50. So what you want to do is the more, the more payments that you can make or the larger payments that you can make towards the loan will bring down the interest and will hit principal sooner and faster. So if you are obligated to make the minimum payments 
within the first year or the schedule payments within the first year and nothing more, nothing less, then what happens is once you get past that saturation point of fuel, once you get the past those 12 months, what you do is you start rapidly trying to pay it down as you can. And you pay down that loan using either a credit card, you can make your payments, additional payments via a credit card or use your line of credit or whatever you might have to make additional payments to try and bring that down as fast as you possibly can so that you avoid the time. You don't want to get hooked on. So the thing is, we talk about time and we talk about money. You might not necessarily have all the money up front, but if you are able to move your money around and have additional funds, or if you have debt tools such as lines of credit and a credit card that will, like you get 5,000 from here and another 5,000 from there, then you throw it at the loan once you are once it's open, once it's truly open and you're allowed to make larger payments on it. That will reduce the that will reduce the amount of interest that they're getting from you, and the time with which with which you're allowed. I mean, the time with which you're hooked to pay pay down that uh, you're on the hook to pay down that loan, because it's all about how it's amortized, and that's how they get you. I hope you have found some of this information valuable. If you have a friend or you know somebody who's uh, going to be purchasing a vehicle and stuff like that, maybe share this information with them. Please feel free to like, share, and comment as well as hit the notification button so you can be notified when another video comes up. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.